Hello, PowerShell peeps. What's going on? Hello. Who's having an awesome time so far at the summit? That is awesome. All right, I'm going to ask you guys some loaded questions because I know you aren't at work this week. Last week, who can tell me the last time they knew time sync on their DCs was totally up to date, in sync, ready to go? Yeah, it happened last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're lying. He's lying. You, I believe. You, I believe. <laughs> All right, so uh, thanks for coming. This is a talk about uh, automating Active Directory health checks. Uh, first time speaker, so a little bit nervous, but hey, let's do this. So my name, Mike Kanakis. I'm an AD and server engineer for a company called Lord Corporation in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. Uh, they do all kinds of cool stuff. Their claim to fame is they have a chemical that bonds rubber to metal. They make a lot of money doing that. They have a patent on it. They make all kinds of cool stuff. They make coatings for airplanes to protect against lightning. Um, <clears throat> They make bushings, rubber bushings for uh, engine mounts for pretty much all the cars and trucks in the world. We have parts in every one of your phones. They have the materials that dissipate heat. Um, all kinds of cool stuff. I don't see any of that. I just maintain servers, make sure people can log in. But they do some cool stuff. I'm also the co-leader of the Raleigh Triangle PowerShell user group. Um, yeah. Um, if you haven't seen us, Come on down and check us out. We're the largest PowerShell group in the United States. We have two meetings a month. We stream, live stream every one. We put them up on YouTube. I've had like the most awesome speakers this year, so I thank you guys who have participated with us. Um, and everybody's welcome. You don't need to be like a super pro or anything like that. Anybody is welcome. Um, there's my Twitter address. I'm a Twitter on all the time. My wife probably would prefer that's just not the case. But uh, email, my website, the website for the Raleigh Triangle PowerShell Users Group. This module that I'm going to show you guys today is called PSAD Health. It's available on GitHub, PowerShell Gallery, drop down the command line, find module, install module. You guys know that stuff. Install it, and you're ready to go. So this talk that you guys are here for today started about 15 months ago uh, at work. The company I work for is an engineering company, and we have a lot of uh, high-profile colleges in the area. So as a result, we draw a lot of uh, engineering students, and they do interns every year. So we had an opportunity to possibly get an intern for the, uh, the IT group, and I was asked to think about if we got an intern, what kind of stuff could you delegate to that intern? So um, as is typical, no intern. So, uh, but the idea didn't go away, you know, because let's be honest, I wasn't going to give an intern anything that was going to get me into trouble or get them into trouble. I was going to offload tasks that I really didn't have the time to do or I knew should be getting done but just weren't. So, you know, when you think about that, that is still able to be done even if you don't have a warm body that's doing that. Those are really tasks that are very good for automation. So that was sort of the genesis of this project. Uh, I wrote about this in the PowerShell conference book last year that was sort of like the baby steps of this module. And there's a gentleman sitting in the front row over here, Greg, who wrote this module with me. Uh, he, read the, he read the chapter in the conference book and he said, hey man, there's some good ideas there. I got some ideas. And we started collaborating and uh, it just took off from there. So um, this is about automating stuff that you guys all should be doing at work with your Active Directory. But you know, let's be honest, you're probably not. Or you're not doing it as regularly as you should be. So this is about um, cleaning up everyday tasks. So the module is called PSAD Health, as I said. Myself, Greg, and Steve uh, Valdigger from Chocolatey helped write this. I'm calling it an open source toolkit because uh, you know it's a module, and obviously I want people to download it and run it. But nothing would make me happier if you downloaded this module and ripped it to shreds and just tore it apart and found problems, or took the code and took it and used it for another project or found a better way for us to do something. The point is, um, this module is a collection of about 12 scripts. You may not want to use all 12 scripts. You may not want to even use any of the scripts. Maybe you got a better idea how we did something. It's not just download and run it. You should feel free to pick it apart and tell us if we did something that you could, we could do better. And at the same token, if you have something that you think you can add to this toolkit, please pass it along, because then we could spread it along to everybody else. Um, 
I'm calling it currently like beta software, but Greg and I are both running it in production environments. Um, we did pretty cool fun fact. We did five builds this week with Azure DevOps pipelines. We did three today, two hours before the yeah, before the talk. I finally got through a demo with no red squigglies on the screen, so I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about this one. But truthfully, if you download this module today and you run it, uh, it's fairly safe for you to run in your environment. Obviously, you test first, but I am confident this code is not going to make you look like a fool at work. <clears throat> so what is this module? Um, it's very simple, a bunch of scripts that's designed to check the innards of AD. Um, the everyday tasks that you're supposed to be thinking about and help you figure out if things are working the way you expect them to. We weren't looking to try to get rid of the tools that were already in place when we started this. You know, on, on the screen I have DC Diag as the example. That's a great tool Microsoft has given us. I have no problem with the tool. I'm thankful for them providing that to us. But you know, DC Diag fixes stuff, but it also gives you information that isn't always like right on point. Sometimes you get stuff out of DC Diag and you're like, mm, was that really a problem? Not really sure. That's an event log entry, but it's not relevant to what I'm seeing. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to build tools that did one thing and did them really well. And when you got an alert from that tool, you knew you had to do something. So from that standpoint, you know, DC Diag, great, put that over there, but we built our own set of tools. Now I say that, and three weeks ago, Adam Bertrand, Adam the Automator, he wrote this cool article on grabbing uh, the DC Diag logs and turning them into objects that you can use in PowerShell, and I just spoke to him yesterday, so we're probably gonna grab his script and roll it into here, so you now help, we'll have that tool in there as well. Um, as of today, there's no dashboards, there's no reports, there's no charts. It's just straight up scripts that do things in the background and tell you when there's a problem. And the reason for that is because um, I didn't need any of that when I talked about this as a start. I don't really look at those daily reports that come through and tell me the growth of this space over time or you know, uh, percentage of uptime. To me, that stuff is great, but I don't really have the time to look at them, so I didn't want tools that did that kind of stuff. These are tools that really were taking work off of my plate, working in the background, and just letting me know when there was something to do. So I call them down and dirty tools to let us know when something is wrong. The rest of the time, get out of my way. I don't want to hear it. <clears throat> so this is what the tools do. I should have started my timer. Oh, well. The, uh, the boxes in blue are the areas that we focus on, and the boxes in gray are basically the tests that we do. Um, <clears throat> and they're meant to check the, the things that we all should be checking every day, or at least regularly, in AD, but for whatever reason, you don't. And, and, and I don't mean that to disparage anybody. Um, the great thing about Active Directory is that it just kind of works. You know, most people focus on user automation, group automation, onboarding. Nobody really thinks about this stuff, per se. And to Microsoft's credit, it has, like I said, it just works, and you haven't had to think about it. But these things that are on the screen up here, these are the things that give me agita. You know, these are the things like, for example, time sync. Um, anybody get a call from the CEO and the CEO secretary wants to know why the time on their phone is three minutes different than the time on their computer? I've gotten those calls, and I feel like a jerk when they make those calls because you're supposed to know, and it implies that you don't know, and it implies that there's a problem in your environment that you weren't aware of. Right? Um, I've also had the same situation where I've gotten the manufacturing work floor has called and said, our employees are hourly, they have a punch card system, um, and your time is off by a couple minutes and you're costing them money. So you know, those are the kinds of things that I want to see go away. And those are the things that you, know, you just expect time sync to work in the organization or like DNS replication issues. I've had issues where uh, we use DFS and you replicate data out through shares and two sites don't get replication working. And it's a build script and they're running the wrong version of a script for four days and nobody knew because replication's not working. So it's those kinds of things that we were looking to solve. <clears throat> so um, I like to say that this module is super simple to install. You can download it and have it up and running in about 15 minutes. Here's the basic process that you follow if you want to get this going, you install it. Um, when we built this tool, it was a bunch of email alert scripts that we've sort of evolved into more. But in the beginning, when you're writing email scripts, you know, you got 
uh, SMTP server, you got mail to, mail from, subject, a lot of repetitive information. And at some point we said, what are we doing? Let's take all these common variables and dump them in a JSON. So we built a, a global JSON you configure once and all your other scripts just read from those, those variables and you're done. So you install the module, you set your variables. Uh, in the variables, it'll pick if you want to do email or Slack or some other stuff. And then if you want, you create scheduled tasks or scheduled jobs. You can run them interactively, but they're designed to be scheduled tasks or scheduled jobs, which means there isn't a lot of output to see when you run them interactively. And then, of course, you know, with sysadmins, there's nothing else to do. Set this up, go get some coffee days over, right? <laughs> so, um, but it's supposed to be easy. <clears throat> uh, let me just keep track of where I am supposed to be. Sure. Is that something that's usually stored on every single domain controller? No. So, um, and that's an awesome question. So let me just start off by saying that I don't really have a Q&A session set up for this. If you've got questions, just kind of raise your hand. I'll get to you. If my head is buried in the console, just throw something at me, and I'll, uh, I'll wake up and answer your question. But to your point, uh, these are tools that I would expect that you run on a, a, a tool server, a member server. So. Our tool, so let's start with some of the basics. Active Directory, domain controllers, if you're in a big environment, there's this concept of tiers of servers. And many times, domain controllers are considered tier zero servers. So if that's the kind of environment that you work in, then we would recommend that you have a tier zero tool server. Along with that environment, all those servers are locked down, right? So nobody can get to them. And your tools are running there, and you know you have control of them. If that's not your environment, I totally get it. That's not my environment. It's, you need to run it on a member server. Is this meant to run on a print server? No. File server? No, obviously, right? But it's a server that you know you can count on. It's, I run this on my batch server that I run my other PowerShell automation on. And then and these tools just run in the background. <clears throat> and they're going to reach out, and they're going to talk to your DCs and check stuff for you. So there's nothing that gets installed on any of the other DCs. I mean, at the, at the very most, we're talking about scheduled tasks that run scripts. There's no crazy config that has to be done here. But the idea is we built these scripts so that you can kind of forget about these things and you just know that they're running for you. <coughs> so I, I wanted to go back for a second. Um, there's a couple things here that may not be so obvious, which is if you work in a big shop, you probably don't have necessarily a great need to know if your DCs are online. You may have a tool that does that. Um, but if you work in a small shop and you don't have a tool, we wanted to include some tools in there that sort of expanded the gamut, uh, worked for everybody, you know, regardless of the size of the office that you work in. And in my place, we use SolarWinds, and it's kind of a big beast of a tool. I don't, honestly, I don't control the box. It doesn't always work that great. So I still run my up-down checks with this tool. I use it as a check against um, SolarWinds, because if SolarWinds is down, how do I know something is up? So I have my own tests that I use to verify the tests that are supposed to be run from them. And we don't just do like ping tests. We do uh, test net connection. We, we do checks of the AD ports to make sure that AD is actually up and responsive. So it's not just, hey, are you alive? Yes, I'm alive. No, it's, it's AD is online. Um, we test core services. All the stuff that you need to make sure AD is running. So there's 15 checks of services, things like DHCP, if you're running DHCP on your domain controllers, DNS, AD web services, DFS, DFSR, event log, net log on, all that good stuff. We test that, and you can set that on an interval, and you can check that as little as or as often as you like. We check stuff like disk space uh, in this JSON file I'm going to show you guys in a second. You set thresholds for these things like, hey, I want to know about Anytime any of my DCs go down below 30% on the sysvol uh, or on the system partition, and they'll send you an alert. Um, we check time sync internally and externally, and we do that in some unique ways, which I'll show you in a little bit. And of course, we check things like replication. <coughs> um, before I go into demos and things like that, I want to show you guys uh, not that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to play some cool intro music, but then I found out you can't do that. So, um, so if you if you head to uh, GitHub, you can go to my repository. After you get done laughing at my uh, blue face, there you can go to the uh, PSAD Health repo. And at the bottom here, we have a quickie primer on what this thing does. 
And if you follow the links over the wiki, uh, Greg, myself, and Steve have spent an enormous amount of time documenting this stuff and, and writing down what, what this tool can do and how you should use it. And I say that because there's no way I'm going to cover all this stuff in 30 or 40 minutes here. So we talk about concepts about how the module is designed, how we think you should use it in your environment, deep dives on all the scripts, um, how you should secure stuff. We're going to have helper scripts out there. If you're not comfortable doing scheduled jobs and you need some help trying to configure that, we've already done the work for you. We've built some helper scripts that you can run that will configure the tasks for you at some recommended intervals. And of course, you don't have to follow our advice. You can do whatever you want with the tool and change it to the way that you think it works. But the point being is, there's an, a lot of detail that we put into this um, that is out there to help you understand how to use this tool. <clears throat> All right, so there is about 12 scripts that run in this thing, and we're not going to be at enough time to go through all 12. And some of them, honestly, are just not that exciting as far as like talking about code. So what I want to do is I want to show you guys some of the sample output. And before I do that, I'll give you an idea of what I got running on my machine here. So I have two DCs, and I have a member server running on my environment. Um, I am sending mail to myself. So my member server is running a little mail application um, and just trying to mimic a basic environment that you, you might see with this. Uh, so I guess we should start with, uh, so after you install the module, uh, of course, this module you should be able to type correctly and then get a list of the commands that are included in this. So they're all functions. They're easy to run. Most of them have pretty decent amount of detail about what to run, more detail on the wiki. We have more detail going into these all the time. Um, and the first thing that you would probably do is there's a config file that's included with this, so you can see the default config. This is not the default config, this is the one I'm using today. And these are the variables that you can set in the module. So you see it's really common stuff like SMTP server, mail to and from. But then we set things like how long do you want to go before you want to know that there's a, a, a problem with a backup? What about your three, free disk threshold on your domain controllers? And then we ask for things like maximum time drift for internal time and external time. And I configured this here for myself so that some things would break. But I can show you. Uh, let's go down and drop down here. Config. So this is the default one. I, I renamed it so it wouldn't get in the way with me today. But So, so it, we've, we've populated with some default values that you can use. And obviously, you can change it very easily. I'll show you how to do that. We have a Slack token in there that you can add if you're using Slack. We want to build in Teams notifications. We're going to do Toast notifications. <clears throat> you can set up mail going to multiple people. <clears throat> Lots of things that you can do. Um, and there's this concept of a support article. So if you work in an environment where you have a knock, or a junior admin staff, and necessarily, uh, let's say that you don't want to get called <coughs> when there's the first problem. We set up a support article that you could use to include with some of these alerts so that when the email goes out, the link to an internal help desk document that you may have with more information that you can have a person say on call or on a knock say, hey, read this doc, do these tests before you call me, right? Maybe you can fix the problem before you even have to call the on-call guy. So if you have some internal documentation you want to add to the emails that we're sending out, that's what that support article is supposed to do for you. If that's not your thing, you can blank it out or you can have it point to anything you want. Setting the variables, I'm, I'm not going to set them because I don't want to blow up the stuff, but it's as simple as just uh, the command is up here. It's a set psad health config. And then you would just you could pick your variables and input values for them. Hit enter and you're good. So now here's the only thing that's a catch that you need to know. When you set your variables for this module, you need to have administrative permissions. You need to be in an elevated command prompt. If you don't, the, the module will create another 
config because it didn't have permissions to write back to the original one. However, the one that it creates will be off somewhere else and it's still going to read the default one. So you notice I'm in an elevated command prompt. That's, that's a requirement for you to update the stuff there. So the stuff is designed to run as a scheduled task and it's designed to run with a service account. And because we're talking about checking domain controls and checking pretty core functions, that service account really is going to be a domain administrator equivalent. We're, we're pretty close to that. So keep those things in mind. But other than that, there's really no gotchas with this stuff. Um, so what I can show you before we jump into some code, this is a cheesy mail server that I set up on my machine. But in here, what I've done is I fired off a bunch of alerts already so you guys can see what, so what, so what you can see what they look like. So for example, this is what a backup alert is gonna look like that comes out of here. Let me see if I can make this a little smaller. So it's a, it's a, you set, you set a flag in that JSON, how many days do I wanna go before I, I know that there's a problem with backup? And you might be asking, why are you checking about AD backups? I have a backup tool that does backups. That's great. I am super happy that you guys have enterprise products that are AD aware and you've pointed your backup at your AD. If you work in a shop that has a backup team, do they tell you the very first time that a backup fails? Right? The place I worked, three days before backups became critical. You as the directory services admin or the sysadmin or the AD admin, whatever that title is, are you okay knowing no AD backups for three days? That's not a question I can answer, but the point is, if you want to keep status on your own backups, separate than whatever backup tool you have, that's what this is here for. What can I help you with? Is, does that just confirm that one DC is being backed up in the forest, or is that for every single DC? I believe this test is going out and checking against the PDC emulator and see when the last time it was backed up. <clears throat> um, and and I, will, I will, very honestly, this is not gonna replace net backup. I understand that. This is to give you guys visibility into stuff that you may have a hard time getting visibility to. So this is just a simple test that's built into AD to say the database is aware of the last time it was backed up. Right? So, so then the reason I'm showing you this here is because this isn't the most exciting code to look at. Um, it does what it's supposed to do, but you know, so here's a, here's a, here's a disk space test, right? Simple stuff, we set a threshold. In this particular case, when I ran this test, I set a ridiculously high value of 70%. So it's saying, hey, DC1, it's running low on disk space. It's currently at this. Here's the free disk space you wanted to know when it's below, this, well, below a threshold. <clears throat> we check for things like external DNS records. Things that are not, uh, um, excuse me, external DNS. Were you able to reach your external DNS? This is kind of interesting how we do this. So what we do is, if you notice, I have not asked you to configure your DCs and say you have to input all the names of your DCs. We're going to go out to AD and we're going to query all that information. We're going to say, give me a list of all the DCs. We're going to save that in a variable and we'll loop through. And this is going to go out to each domain controller. It's going to make a remote connection domain controller. And from that domain controller, can you get to the external DNS server? Not just from your tool server, but if you have 30 DCs around the world? Sure, I'll show you in a second. <clears throat> I just wanted to get through the easy ones. I test for SRV records. Hey, are you, are you have all the important stuff that's in AD. Again, you guys get the idea. So let's, uh, let's, let's look at some code. All right, so I showed you guys what the default config file looks like. I showed you how to set the config file. I showed you what some emails look like. There's three tests that I really want to sort of surface up to you guys. And then if we have time, I'd be happy to go through some of the others. Um, I'm going to show you guys how we test internal time sync, how we test sysval, sysval replication, and how we test AD object replication. Um, so let's go through those one at a time here. Uh, okay, so, come on. All right, so let me jump to the right spot and what I'm looking for here. So these are all functions and functions in a module are sitting in a giant PSM file. So I'm looking for a particular line of code so I can show you guys something here. Time to 
time flies. All right, so here we're going to be testing time sync. So standard function, we have some examples of how to use it, notes like that. One thing that's really interesting, some of those other tests, they're kind of basic, right? There's either disk space or not disk space. It's either online or it's not. These are a little bit more intric intricate. You know, we're testing the process, not just is time correct. So what we've done in this case is in addition to creating alerts, we're writing to the event logs. So we've created an event source that we call PS Monitor, and we've created a bunch of event logs, uh, event entries that are unique so that they don't step on others. To, of, the, of each step of the process. So maybe you have a sim and you check on certain events in your event log. You can fire off alerts based on just on that kind of stuff. Um, if I fire down here a little bit farther, I can show you guys how this works a little bit. So here you can see, um, I probably showing up a little bit. We, we go out and we query um, AD for the list of DCs and then we, we throw that into it, a variable. And then we loop through that variable. And over here, what we're doing is in this particular test, we're going out and we're saying, hey, for the first DC in the list, let me go and get the time from the PDC emulator. And at the same time, let me go get the time from that first P DC in the list. Now we have two times. We, we can check the time span between them, and we calculate a value. And we take that value, and then we go and we look at that value against the value that you set in your JSON and said, hey, I don't want to drift more than 45 seconds uh, excuse me, 15 seconds internally. Is that number lower than 15 seconds? Great. Move on to the next one. If it's not, we'll actually try, you know, we're going to write some of the stuff to the event log, which I'm going to show you. But you see here, uh, line 1179 here, we're actually going to try to resync time if it's that far off, fix the problem automatically. And again, all this stuff is being written to the log, which I'll show you in a second. <clears throat> so if we do a test here. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, is that better? All right, and I'll try to scroll it around to make it. Make, so, all right, so let me just go through that again if anybody was trying to follow along and it was too small. So here we have a, we have a for loop. We're writing event log stuff. And then we're, we're checking here. We have the a concept of a reference time. We go out and get the time on the PDC emulator. Remote time is the server that we're checking against. And we're going to do that every time we loop through for every server. So it's not just grab the time once and then go and check a bunch of servers. It's grab the time, check a server. Grab another timestamp, check another server. Grab another time step so that they should only really be milliseconds apart. And even if they're a second apart, that's fine. But again, you set that threshold in your config file. And then if it's past that value, do something. And I can show you how that works a little bit here. So get when tail. So what I'm using here is basically a poor man's uh, tail utility. I'm going to watch the application log on this tool server. And then over here, I'm going to open up another window. And what are we running? We're doing time sync test AD internal. Time sync. So um, I haven't broken time on this, so it's going to come back successful. But you're going to see when I run this test that it's going to go out and hit two servers, flag those in the event log, and tell you what had happened. So we do this, and we'll see over here. You see, so we got some new entries. So, so here's my event log entries. I'm starting to test my cycle. I'm checking one. I'm checking two. There's no problems. I'm done. I'm going to move on. Sure. Yes, yeah. Um, and I'm, yep. oh. no, please. Uh, was there a particular reason you chose to use WMIL check? Ah, good question. So, we, uh, so I demoed this last month, and that's the same exact thing that I got beat up on in another presentation. That is probably the first change that we're going to make and move it over to SIM. Very honestly, I didn't want to do that right before this. Yeah. And, you know, but yeah, so we're going to move away from that model um, and move to the SIM. Um, and that's, you know, that's a simple change, but uh, that'll probably be done shortly right after this. But the, and the reason I was wondering was around all the requirements, basically. Obviously, if you're doing like a remote hardware, if you're going around and do that at that time, yeah. you're already doing 5.5, 5.6, and not remote, like, once you're buying, you're not having 
So the same thing, uh, you know, I, I did this in my user group last month, and there's a gentleman in the group who's got a fairly large environment, and he's locked it down pretty good, and he said, hey, man, I love your tool, but I don't want to run this because I'm not running WMI. So I get that. Um, that's uh, probably the first iteration with, that we wrote this script, and we probably never came around to coming back and fix that. But that's, I understand that security concern. That's something that will definitely be addressed. Um, but you see the idea here, so we're, we're detailing the whole entire process. Um, and obviously, if we had 30 servers, it's going to go through, and you'll see for each server what's going to happen. And if it's a failure, if we go back to the code here for a second, uh, you see there's a, there's a pretty good detail in the event logs that you're going to get. Failure, beginning, end, a win alert was sent, and that should show up in the event log here, if I refresh this. So here's, here's our entries. If you're not a command line ninja and you like to use Event Viewer, so there you can see very clearly what has happened. So, and again, if some of these had failed, if you had specified a Slack alert, a Teams alert, an email, that would have come along with this stuff. So, and we do, two, we do two similar tests like that. We're going to test sysfile replication and AD object replication. I want to show you guys the same thing. They work very similarly. Um, so I'm going to move on to showing you guys how sysfile replication works. And while I'm setting that up, uh, give you a quick explainer of what we're doing here. So sysfile replication. Uh, what we're doing is we're creating a synthetic object and we're placing it into the sysfile on the PDC emulator. I'll get there in a second, 13, 19, so this is another function. And, and the thought process here is while I'm going and getting down the code here, is we create an object, we place it in the PDC emulator. It's just a text file, right? And then when we watch <laughs> it walk through the environment to all of our DCs, and we, we, we wait because we know that replication is not an instantaneous event. So the, replica, the object passes through the environment, and we check it as it goes, and we make sure that it reaches all of our DCs. And we give it a period that we say, OK, replication should hit all the volumes in X amount of time. And if that happens, great. Move on and take, do the test again later on. When the test is ses successfully completed, that garbage object that we created, we throw it away. Uh, and then we repeat that test on a regular interval. And if it doesn't happen, then I've obviously alert out. So we're doing the same thing here. We have some event logs, that uh, event entries that are going to be generated to give you an idea of what's going on here. As we walk through the code here, we, we grab domain information. Uh, where do I want to be here? 1377. So right here, we start creating objects. So we create a temp object. We dump it in a folder. We, we save it in a variable so we can call that thing later. And then we start getting site information and we start checking for that object in various sites. And you see here we go to sleep. We give it a chance for it to get between the sites. And we check that. And you know I understand that replication between sites is not instantaneous. Most people have a 15 or a 30 or an hour delay. There is a, a field in the uh, JSON that had object replication cycles. So what we do is, in some cases, we sleep a minute. Some cases, we sleep 30 seconds. And you say, how many of those cycles do you want to wait before something happens? So if it's sleep for a minute, and I say 50 cycles, that's going to be 50 minutes. If replication of an object hasn't fi finished in 50 minutes to all my sites, and I know that it should have, that's a problem. You can up that value up as high or as low as you want. <clears throat> so then that's what's basically happening here. So we're, we're looping through, and we're testing for this object, and then we're rotating between servers and verifying that that object made it to each server. And if it did, we're writing event logs to the event logs about the status along the way. And like I said, if nothing is wrong, take the object, throw it away, repeat the test at, a regular, at another interval. And I, and I can show you that as well. So I believe we are still watching the log here. I should be able to go here and say test sys file replication. So the first thing it's doing that I didn't mention here is my tool server is going out and trying to connect to my PDC emulator, my, my domain controller, make sure it's online. It's making a connection. Once it makes a connection, this is going to take a few seconds here. 
it'll write the object. Let me go back to the log watcher here. And you can see we've started an internal time. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. The bottom line here, 748. We've created our test object. That's the name of the object. It's been created. Now we're going to sleep for a minute. I only have two DCs, so this will go through real quick. It's going to verify that it got to the other DC. It's going to give us an entry, and it's going to finish, and then it's going to throw the object away. <clears throat> and obviously, you understand that if you had more DCs, which I'm sure most of you do, it would loop through all these and verify that that happens. And the cool thing about this is, yeah, we're watching this, and it's right in the event logs, but this is just happening. It's happening all day long for you, as much or as little as you want to. And then when something is not working, you're notified. So maybe you have the tools to do this if you're in a big shop. But in my shop, I do not have a way to test this file replication very easily. I know before someone else tells me. And that's really what I'm trying to accomplish here. Sure. So um, in the case of creating objects, I think, yeah, so it cleans itself up. But the, one of the first things, and it might be in one of my old tests I could show you up a little higher, it's going to check for any objects that might have been left behind prior. So it says, hey, just want to let you know there's an old object here that you might not have realized. But in this case, it's a text file that we do in the syslog directory. With the AD object replication, it's a lot of the same process. Um, Greg created a method to create a disabled computer object. So even if it's left behind, it's really not uh, a security risk to you. And because it's disabled, um, hopefully you have some cleanup process that's going to come along and sweep that out. But it should clean itself up, so as you see here. So um, let me just stop for a second here. Any questions you guys have? Yeah, sure. So It's, when I wrote the chapter, Jeff Hicks says, you need to do this with Pester. I didn't do it with Pester. When Greg and I wrote the scripts and people started looking at it, you should do Pester tests. The problem with Pester tests is it's pretty hard to mock AD. So if you, you know, for us to write the scripts to test and you don't have an environment, that's the tough part with Pester. But yeah, it's something we've been thinking about. And there's some thought like maybe we move this stuff over to only pester tests. But um, Greg and I, I'll be very candid with you, Greg and I just don't have that confidence in our knowledge of pester to be able to write this project with that. But uh, my user group has done a couple of pester talks, and I'm like, eh, it'd be pretty cool to do that with pester. But, uh, so we've talked about it. We haven't gone there. But hey, sounds like an awesome opportunity for someone to jump in and help out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike, what can I do for you? Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So a little later on, if I have time, and it's, it's getting a little long already, I wanted to talk a little bit about community. But um, I can show you AD, op AD object replication if you guys would like to see that. It's going to be very similar to that. Let's talk through the, the code on that guy. So let me get my spot here. While I'm setting this up, does anybody else have any other questions that I can maybe possibly answer? Hi, what can I do? So this is this is old school. These are scheduled tests that are running on a batch server. Um, so the question was, where do you run these tools? And I had said. I'm doing it old school, like scheduled tests, scheduled jobs. And she's, she said, we have a lot of problem with scheduled tests being reliable. Um, that's an interesting point. I, I have quite a bunch of stuff that I run as scheduled jobs and scheduled tasks. And I have to say that I, I don't have any reliability issues. So I would be happy to help you figure out what's going on with those scheduled jobs if, or just scheduled tasks. But For instance, we've got probably a hundred different automation tests. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So, 
So I, I totally get that, and I would counter with this. That's why we had said tool, tool server, tier zero server, lock it away. This should not be where the client services guys are running like checks against dis, uh, desktops and stuff like that. And I'm not implying that that's what you're doing, but you know this. I kind of think of this stuff, and I'll be right with you, Mike. Is like set it up, lock it down, and and that's kind of it. Um, what do you have? Let's go ahead, Mike. I'm just gonna say I have some jobs that are running in a period. Periodic interval, and there's an option in there to say if it's, if it's still running after so long to kill it. So that's actually a good point because I think the default for scheduled tasks and scheduled jobs is like three days. And I always set it to like 10 minutes or, or 15 minutes because most of my scheduled tasks, you know, is like run and finish. So do you have anything blocking to make sure that the scheduled tasks? Is there someone watching the watcher? Uh, well, that was sort of what the DC disk based, I mean, the uh, up down tests were, right? I'm watching my solar winds box by doing that. No, we don't have anything watching the watcher, but um, that's an interesting con concept. Maybe we could do something like that. Um, but to her point, let's say scheduled tasks and scheduled jobs are not your deal. These are PowerShell scripts, so you should be able to plug them into any other automation tool that you use. I mean, they're functions. You just need to be able to call the function. I'm a Windows guy, and, and I don't have CI, CD pipelines and all those other things, so it's, it's scheduled jobs and scheduled tests for me. Um, but your point is well taken about, you know, you need to kind of keep an eye on these guys and make sure they run. Um, I was starting to show you guys. Any other follow-up questions? What the, um, with the uh, Syswell replication, was there a, I didn't see any, but was there a rep, um, dependency on the binaries, the DFS, like I, I actually on the DFS? No. So, um, so in a separate test, we're checking that services are up, right? So we're assuming at this point we know that we have a healthy environment from a services standpoint. What we simply did was we took an object and we placed it in there and then we let AD move it over all by itself. And we're just basically saying, I put it on a jump over here, I'm gonna walk away and I'm gonna wait and I see the objects over there. And how it got there, it's not really aware of that, it just knows that it got there, right? <clears throat> so, um, AD object replication and wow, time flies. Sure. I think you're going to need pretty severe rights. The other thing is with the resync uh, design, mm -hmm. you might need it there. Yeah. That's the only thing that really requires it. So if you don't want to have the automated fix, you don't need it. Oh, not the default. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you don't have to have a tool. Right. You don't try to fix something. So, so same deal here. Where you know we've we got event entries to kind of keep you in loop of what's going on. Maybe uh, it's getting a little short on time, so I'm going to try to get this one going really quick here. We're still doing a while. Uh, when the test AD object. How uh, interesting would it be for you to? I'll say refactor these tests so you don't need domain admin juice. Um, well, he just detailed some of the rights that you do need. At some point, you're going to need an account that needs to do something, right? So we can talk about skinny and down the rights a little bit. I don't know that you necessarily need domain admin, but if you're setting up a service account and you shut off interactive logon with that account, it, go ahead, Fred. I think you could skinny it out. Might be able to go around with similar problem by using just an administration. Uh, yeah. Redefine the procedures and just the procedures you also execute. Yep, I, I totally agree with that. So, um, so before we were asking about cleanup, and here you see some, some um, look at that. So here we're doing a, our AD uh, replication test. It creates an object. Here's the name of the object. It tells you it's been created, and now it goes and it's, it's going to go to sleep, and it's going to verify that the object made it over the other DC. It's going to log an entry, and then at the end, we should say, <clears throat> here we go, replicated to the site. It's made it there. I deleted the object. I cleaned myself up. And again, that process repeats on an iterative basis depending on the values that you set. So those are the things that I wanted to show you guys today. I can do some more, but we're pretty close on time. Uh, I'll ask again, anybody have any more questions they want to talk about? 
All right, so with that, I just want to jump back over here for a second. Got some questions to ask you guys, so I'm a little behind on my slides here. Um, a quick plug. September 21st, if you happen to be on the East Coast, my group's going to be putting on a PowerShell Saturday. I would love for you guys to come. We're going to have a full day of content. We're going to do three tracks of various content. Of uh, We're going to be focusing on Azure. Yes, sir. Are the uh, requests for papers open right now? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So um, we're going to be focusing on cloud, one-on-one, and tools. Um, this is not an event where you need to be a super expert to come to. This is really about supporting the community. Anybody can come and get value out of this. Um, I'm working with James Petty and Little John to help me organize this event. We are accepting submissions for talks right now. And I will say this, if you are looking to get started speaking in the community, I am very happy to have first time speakers uh, join us. So if you're interested, head to this website and you can get more information. And then let me ask one quick question. Who in the room has seen Avengers so far? All right, who loved it? All right, if you haven't seen it, I promise no spoilers here. No spoilers. All right. All right. Get on the team, and I'll, let me explain what I'm talking about. So this team, I could not have done this without Greg. Greg went out and reached out to the community and said, I want to help. Stephen Valdigan, who's not here, he reached out to the community and said he wanted to help. This team was able to do more than one person could have done alone. If you've seen Avengers, no spoilers, but I will just say teamwork gets the job done. Right? So find something in the community that you love to do. Help someone out in the community, whether it's this project, something on GitHub, blog post. I was so inspired when I went to this conference last year. I put in a submission. I'm up here doing this talk. You guys all have something you can commit to this community. I invite you guys to join, whether it's this project or something else. Go out there and make all these projects that we've been watching today awesome. And with that, I will say thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>